All righty, thank you so much. I was really treat to have you here. I have been here a little over two and a half years and I have not had the pleasure, so thank you so much for joining us. I know we'll have you back. Grand rising, everyone. Yes, that's our theme this year. We're talking about grand rising and looking at how we can really embody this teaching and walk it out into the world. And uh, this month, I always have to look at it because it doesn't flow off the tongue very, very elegantly. That's how we've never done it. And uh, that's just, uh, somebody told me that was hip slang, right? Hip slang for uh, what the kids are saying today. That's how we've never done it. And we're really looking at how to step into and um, embody newness. We've had um, a wonderful time with the first two weeks as we looked at um, how to be fresh and available to <clears throat> new ideas, how to let go of past ideas. I dug up that wonderful uh, saying from Ernest Holmes, Ernest Speak, that is that um, a principle is not bound by precedent. And, and all that means is that principle is forever creating out of itself over and over and over again. And so we're, we're looking at how we can embody all that. And today is our uh, annual meeting. It's, I'm, I'm very excited about that. It's a great opportunity to really engage the community, to look at 2023 and to look ahead a little bit and vote in a couple of new trustees and say thank you to the trustees that are rolling off. So it is a, oh, and oh, wait a minute, there's something else today. I don't know, what is it? St. Patrick's Day, right, I should have known from all the, all the green out there. Right, it's St. Patrick's Day. And uh, it's that day that Irish people have a great excuse to get drunk. No, no, that's not what it is. <laughs> No, 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 I didn't mean that. Did I say that out loud? <laughs> uh, today I'm talking about, tell me something good. This, th now, when I say that, do you immediately hear the, like, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me something good. Yeah. <laughs> That's the closest I get to singing. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're really looking at how to begin to embrace new possibility and unlimitedness as we, you know, in that, in that first week and the second week we talked about our, our past a little bit and how we had to scoop it up and, and um, acknowledge it so that we wouldn't be um, burdened by it. We wouldn't be burdened by it. And the thing about uh, this week's talk is that I really want us to remember that not only are we working with divine intelligence, but we're also working with a mystical presence that is embodied by all of us. Now you may think when I say the word mystical that it's some you know, guru in a robe up on a mountaintop, but as um, it was Richard Rohr's writing last night as, as I was reading that this morning, he talks about the mystical as really being just the knowing of spirit. Just the knowing of spirit, that we, we have a sense of spirit within ourselves. We have a sense of spirit around us. We have a sense of spirit in our daily life. And so I wanna challenge you to be comfortable with being a mystic. Be a mystic, that's the place where we, we begin to work with true power. Now, um, I will tell you, and I've shared this with you before, I spent a lifetime being a supreme problem solver. I could figure all kinds of things out, and I still have a great mind for that. But when we're talking about working with principle, we're really talking about working with something that is beyond our own steam. We're working with a power and a presence that not only does it use my marvelous mind, but it uses my marvelous heart and it helps me when I can simply surrender to tap into a power that is greater than me, right? That great um, quote that I remember seeing when I went to Founders Church, oh, I don't know, eight or nine years ago, and the quote on the wall 
that there is a power for good in the universe greater than you, and you can use it. And then at that gets summarized or updated, I will say, by saying there's a power for good in the universe greater than you, and it can use you. And it's sort of this two-way street that th that source is always using us as we're using it. And one of the ways that it really um, manifests for us, but one of the ways that we can really begin to experience spirit, to have that mystical experience, is through forgiveness. But I'm going to, I'm going to, it's a little bit of a play on words. It's forgivingness. Not just forgiveness, but forgivingness. Uh, one of the things that is often misunderstood about this teaching, about working with principle and working with this philosophy, is people think it's just positivity and wishful thinking, right? We have, you know, if you think it, it will happen. But it's so much more than that. There is a spirit that is forever giving of itself to life. And if we get all wrapped up in what we're getting, then we're forgetting. And we want to be forgiving this. And spirit knows how to work with the energy of giving this. It knows, that's all it knows, actually. It pours itself into life. And when we can create that space within ourselves where we are in a giving place, what is it? So if you, you know, if you want a new job, it's not about getting the new job. It's about what you want to give to it. If you want a partner, it's not about getting a partner. It's about what you want to give to your partner. And so as we move into this idea of tell me something good, we begin to remember that what we forgot, <laughs> what we often forget, right? There's this great quote. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm playing around getting ready for our class, The Power of Decision. And like, so I cracked open my... Uh, Raymond Charles Barker book, and he has this great quote in here uh, where he says that when we are working with this idea of givingness, for givingness or givingness, that this is, and this is his quote, this is not negating the material world. It is seeing the material world as consciousness temporarily locked up in form but never limited to the form in which it is functioning. And so when we are working with consciousness, when we are beginning to help to uh, tap into that mystical presence that lives within us, that wants to speak to us, that wants us to express as it, the place to start is gratitude. The place to start is celebrating what is and beginning to move into that realm of givingness. And when we can find ourselves moving into that place of, of what is it that we want to give to a situation? What is it that we want to give to the world? What is it that we want to give to life? Well, that's when spirit and uh, we are aligned in our directionality. We are aligned with how we are going to walk things out in the world and it makes for a much easier pathway for consciousness as we are looking for this good experience. And so it, it, it does require us to have a little bit of a, a shift in our thinking. Um, this book, The Power of Decision, it was actually the first class I ever took in, at Centers for Spiritual Living. It was then called The Greater church, the Greater Baltimore Church of Religious Science. And um, I remember walking into that church in the fall, and they were already in their classes, and I was like, when's the next class? When's the next class? And, um, and it was power of decision. And when I went into that class, I was, I was in a place where I was leaving one job and um, trying to figure out what my next move was. Uh, it was time for me to, to leave this. I was working in D.C. I don't know, I've shared some of that in the past. And I was trying to, you know, I was going on job interviews. They weren't going great. And um, so I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. And I took this class. And through the exercises, 
I got really clear. I got really clear on what it was that I um, wanted to give. I, uh, you know, we had our pods and we would work week after week. And, and I remember during one of the meditations, I, I had this um, vision and it was really born out of an exchange that I had. I was, I was doing tax returns on the side to make a little money. And I met this recent divorcee in the library because she was confused about how to do her taxes and she, she wanted to see if she could do them herself. And so I met her at the library. That was when you could, could do them yourself and <laughs> do them by hand. And we pulled out the forms and we, we, you know, I showed her, explained it all to her and she, you know, she was really grateful. And when she left, I thought to myself, that was really a compassionate service. So I'm in my class and I see this big vision of this big sign on the side of the road. And it says, Compassionate Tax Service. <laughs> and so I rented a space. I got a big sign. It said, Compassionate Tax Service. I organized. And I started serving people from that place. And my business was really successful. Um, as, you know, it was as successful as I let it be, I'll put it that way. But one of the things that I focused on it was what is it that I wanted to give? You know, people freak out about their taxes. Anybody here? <laughs> right. Totally freak out about their taxes. And so our office, and I had a small staff after a couple of years, we, we were there to give people comfort. We were there to help them understand what was going on. We were there to empower them. And the... And all of that came from making a decision about what I wanted to give to the world at that time. Not from what I wanted to get. Now, when I was leaving the one job and going on job interviews, I was all caught up in what I wanted to get, right? I wanted how much money I wanted to make, where I wanted to work, who I wanted to work for. But stepping into this different space made all the difference in the world. Barker talks about this a little bit in this, um, this book where he talks about how we can, he calls it the, the trap doors in the mind. He says, intuition has too long been used at the material level only. People claim that their intuition helped them to select the right horse at the racetrack or the right marriage partner or the right stock to buy. And if these selections turn out all right, well then they claim to be the result of intuition. And if they turn out wrongly, they're considered the results of bad judgment, right? <laughs> we really discount the power of, of intuition. He goes on to say that true to intuition does not deal with getting. It deals with self-awareness. It is not the infinite seeking to give you more things. Most of the readers of this book do not need more things. They need a larger sense of self. They need to know what they, that they are as pure consciousness in form. Only then can they make the correct decisions, not based on facts, things, or good judgment. These are for those who are not yet able to see the consciousness as reality and that we move as consciousness through consciousness, exploring consciousness and thereby by experiencing consciousness. It's consciousness, y'all. <laughs> it's all consciousness. Everything is created twice. First in consciousness and then in form. But we need to remember that that form is temporary. Form is transient. Nothing, nothing in form lasts forever. Ancient ruins are proof of that. Nothing lasts forever that's in form. But what is eternal is consciousness. It is the consciousness that we carry with us. It is our ability to extract our attention from the condition and back to where our true power lies. Uh, again, reading Richard Rohr this morning, he talks about how for centuries, I'm not exaggerating, for centuries humankind has been told by religion that the power for good in the universe lies outside of yourself. And not only that, religions taught that in order for you to have any experience of God, you had to go outside of yourself because you were not worthy on your own. 
And over the last hundred years or so, we have woken up. And we continue to wake others up to know that the worthiness has always been within us. That we have never been unworthy, we've just forgotten. And we've been conditioned to forget that. And so if you're sitting here, you're listening to me from the live stream, or you're sitting here in this room, you're here because you want to remember. You want to remember that that power and that presence that, that animates all life wants to give itself through you. How else can God express itself except through humanity? How else can God feed the poor? How else can God serve humanity except by means of us? And so when we're beginning to look at this tell me something good and, and how it is that we begin to work with spirit to create newness and unlimited possibility, we're looking at ourselves as the conduit, the vehicle that that happens through. I, I really love what um, Barker says. He goes on to say, there's a trap door in your mind. When you open it, by knowing yourself as the I am consciousness, two new perceptions enter your arena of thinking. They are not perceptions of yourself as you are. They will not lead you to greater outer accomplishments, though these will automatically follow. They will lead you to a higher level of knowing where ideas are factual and things are not. Intuition is the process of self-awakening. It gives you glimpses of a larger life, a greater mind, and a deeper reason for being. Intuition reveals what you always have been. Its revelations seem new and strange. Sometimes I call this instruction the science of remembering. The science of remembering. This book changed my life. It changed the trajectory that I was on. It shifted my mind into a place of greater alignment with the, with the givingness of spirit. It helped me to remember what I already knew. And, and, and I know you, you experience it too when, when you come here on a Sunday, when you listen to a talk, when you take a class, when you read a book like this, there's a resonance. There's something, you hear it and you're like, yeah, I get it because this is already within each one of us. And our job is to stop forgetting, to, to let go, to tune in, and to really listen to spirit, to what it wants to express by means of us. As we move through the rest of this month, the practice is going to be for us to slow down a little. There's a lot of hurrying out there in the world right now. There's a lot of jockeying for positions. There's a, a lot of people who are trying to get stuff. I mean, it's everywhere. It's in our retail, our marketing, our politics, our government. It's, it's in our neighborhoods. It's in our HOAs. It's everywhere. It's that we seem to try to wire humanity to getting something. And that's why the world seems a little upside down right now. And so your job, your assignment, is to slow down and to pause and to align yourself with the givingness of spirit. To ask yourself, what is mine to give? What is mine to express? What is mine to share? And when you get in tune with that, again, from, I mean, I'm, this is just two pages I keep reading from. <laughs> like, it's a great book. Barker says, at the center of your consciousness is a purpose, but not a plan. The purpose is that of the infinite mind aware of itself, thereby having consciousness. This consciousness is the purpose of your being. It is why you are what you are as consciousness. It has nothing to do with what you are at the level of fact. 
This you have self-determined and experienced. Your real purpose is you as consciousness, intuitively directed by ideas, free to move in consciousness, experiencing endless fields of consciousness. When you decide that this is what you really are, the purpose is known to you and you perceive yourself as a continuum of thought and feeling, directing your experience of the world with volition. Good stuff, really good stuff. Remembering that we are here to give and that we are never asked to give more than we already have. Um, I think it's Michael Beckwith also who says that we give from the overflow, right? We take care of ourselves. We, we um, make, you know, we, we meet our own needs and then we give from the overflow knowing that we are a constant source like a, um, a mountain stream that is continually flowing into the ocean. We are continually flowing into life. And so as we look at the next two weeks, and Easter's coming up, right? It's an opportunity to be resurrected pe people, right? <laughs> it's an opportunity to, to be reinvented. It's an opportunity to remake ourselves and to recall who we are and what we're here to do. So we'll practice the science of remembering. We'll start with gratitude and this, this sense of givingness that is moving from spirit through us. And we'll let go of the burden of getting because it really is a burden if we're so focused on what we need to get. And we'll think about what we need to give instead as Howard Thurman so famously said, keep fresh before you the moments of your high resolve. There is something in every one of us that waits and listens for the sound of the genuine in yourself. It is the only true guide you will ever have. Surrender yourself to it and lean into forgivingness. Thank you very much. And so, let's do a little spiritual practice. This is affirmative prayer. It is the power of moving our consciousness to that place of openness and complete possibility. Whew. And as I exhale, and then take a deep breath, I know that the very breath I breathe is the representation of spirit moving in as and through me. It nourishes every cell of my body. It knows what nutrients to hold on to and what things to let go of. And so in this moment of remembering, I remember who I am. And as I speak this word in first person, I know this for everyone within the sound of my voice, that I am a point of light in spirit. I am a point of decision in spirit. I am a point of expression. And I know as I move through this week, as I continue to practice the science of remembering, I remember who I am. I am a divine expression of God. And I have unlimited opportunities when I focus on what I can give. And I give freely of what comes to me from source, trusting spirit, trusting love, and knowing that when I am in and practicing forgivingness, that I am indeed that place where love and beauty and joy and power and freedom show up. And so it is with a grateful heart that I celebrate this divine design, divinity in human form as me and as everyone I see. And I celebrate this reality, this greater reality that I choose to see no matter what else conditions try to tell me. 
And I'm so grateful, grateful for love that continues to personify itself in my life in so many ways. I'm grateful for community. I'm grateful for the opportunity to continually renew my mind and to remember this greatest truth, that love always prevails and dissolves all things unlike it. So I simply let go and let it be. I trust the law. I trust principle. And we anchor this prayer in that same power and love by saying together, and so it is. Thank you very much.